guys have heard um, a lot of, you know, if you've heard from a number of experienced, successful entrepreneurs this semester. And we're here to share a bit about um, failure. You know, a lot of times when we hear from entrepreneurs, we hear about the successful ones. But as you guys know or have heard, over nine or 10, um, probably more like 95 out of 100, actually fail. So there comes a time for a lot of entrepreneurs, most entrepreneurs on most projects, when you need to make a decision whether to stay in or get out. For a couple reasons, for me personally, I decided to shut it down. One, I'd failed to find a co-founder that was a really, that was one, a good match, and two, who was willing to, to really um, stick on this with me for a period of years, because most startups, as you guys know, take years to actually see success. Secondly, the, you, you guys all face trade-offs. You know, you're here, you're not doing something else. If you're working on an entrepreneurship project, you could be, you know, working on something else. So it was a combination of sort of um, co-founder dynamics, or not having a co-founder, and personal trade-offs. I'm gonna move into the idea that coding is a waste of time. We all are hackers, we love putting things together, or programmers, I should say, but the fact of the matter is, coding is a waste of time at the very beginning of your startup. Machining something is a waste of time. Building something is a waste of time. You need to find a quick way to prove what you're working on. Even if you don't want to run an experiment like this, you have to do something that proves the value of your business before you spend time building the product, okay? If you're serious about it being an entrepreneur, you have to stop being an engineer and be an entrepreneur. You can't just build things and then hope that when it's said and done, people were gonna buy it. Recruiting is something you have to do sort of like 24 seven. It's a gear that you really have to be in always because you never know when you're gonna run into a rock star um, or a superstar. So you really need to be putting yourself out there sort of constantly. And when you do that, really be yourself. Be authentic. Secondly, once you find people to work with, particularly a founding team, um, get it on paper. A lot of you guys are gonna be working um, with friends, with classmates, and it feels, it's gonna feel awkward and, and formal to sort of spell out, okay, you know, um, if someone leaves in this period of time, this is what happens. But it's really important that you do so, particularly if you're friends, you owe it to yourselves to get these things on paper so that it doesn't feel personal later on. And so, as clueless entrepreneurs, we need to make sure we're using the people who came before us, and those are our mentors. They've been there, they've done that. So you need to go out and find mentors who can help steer you away from the early stage potholes that a lot of entrepreneurs run into. And the number one thing a mentor is looking for is coachability. If you're the kind of person who's just gonna take your idea and just steamroll right through and not take any feedback, no one's gonna wanna mentor you. You need to prove that you are willing to make tweaks to your business model in order to get to market faster because you probably know your business model than anyone else, but your mentors are gonna know business better than you. What skills was I looking for in a co-founder? Aside from skills, I think you can work with someone who's really talented, but if you can't, stay, if you can't communicate, if you can't be in the same room together, it's just not gonna work. So a good fit, people who can build stuff, but also people who are, can work in that environment without direction and with ambiguity is like key. Being able to find a cultural fit is huge. And I know Josh has touched on it, but it's, it's about the team, the team, the team, to quote you know, the mighty Bo Beckler.